Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Calder. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring true Christianity for today. The Bible tells us all, each and every person, has sinned and come short of the glory of God. And as we will see, there's only one way to obtain forgiveness, and that's God's way. But how did human beings and society get into such conditions that sin abounds and grows and multiplies? Stop and think for all of those of you who are 50 years old or older, look back and see how much sin has increased everywhere in the world. Look at it in your own home, your own life, the city you live in, regardless of where you are. Sin is abounding. Now, why is that? Because men and women have a carnal mind and they don't want to be told what to do, especially by God, and especially by ministers and preachers who are hypocritical themselves living in sin and greed. Father, we thank you, sir, and I'm asking you now, sir, according to your word, bless our partners beyond measure. Yes in the name of Jesus. For you said in 2002, I'm sending you new partners who are very strong financially and they'll obey you. And I will increase your long time partners and they will obey me. <laughs> Praise God. Isn't that good? Hallelujah. And it's coming to pass. You know what? Jesus is Lord. And this causes a lot of people to turn away from God, to turn away from the words of God, to turn away from the Bible. But you need to come back to the Bible and come back to the Word of God to find out where are you going, what are you doing, what is your life going to be, and why do you need forgiveness, and what does God say the way to do it actually is from His Word. Well, let's see what the world is like and why. Well, the Bible tells us in Revelation 12 and 13 that Satan the devil has deceived the whole world, and the whole world is worshiping Satan. Except those who have the Spirit of God. So ask yourself the question, whom do you serve? Whom do you worship? And everyone thinks, well, I'm good. My wife's okay. I'm doing fine. You know, there's even a book out that is, you know, I'm okay, you're okay, which paved the way for all of the promiscuity and everything that we have in the world and the sin that lies everywhere around us. And because of that, here's a good analysis of it in Romans, the first chapter, because we ended up talking about that the whole world is like it was before the flood when God flooded the whole world. And this tells us and reveals that every single civilization, meaning every person down through history, unless they repent and come to God his way, have fallen victim to this. So let's read Romans, the first chapter, and tie this in with 
what we have covered before, of come out of her, my people. Because this world is in Babylonian confusion from top to bottom. Verse 18, because the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. You think we're having blessings and goodness come from God out of heaven? No way. Upon all ungodliness. And what we're talking about here is the majority of people today. Now, in some areas, it's not quite as bad as others. But out here in California, that's Many places here are some of the worst in America. <laughs> then you go to Europe and look at Europe. Sex work is a completely legal profession and uh, the working spaces are legal as well, but only um, in places that have a specific purpose for prostitution. So in the Red Light District, for example, they counted all the buildings in 1996 and they gave all these buildings a purpose for window prostitution. But sex workers choose their own way of working, so they can offer uh, whatever they, uh, they please. They are self-employed. You know, as a window prostitute, you are your own boss. There are sins and problems, and here it describes why? The answer is this. You can never reject God and his word and expect it to work. It will never work. All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. And today they can do it with the push of a button. Boop. And you are histoire. And they will eventually do that to everything and everyone that represents God anywhere in the world. Because that which may be known of God is manifest among them, for God has manifested it to them. Yes, there's some people out there saying, yes, there's no such thing as evolution. Everything came into being all at once. But they are laughed at. They are ridiculed. For the invisible things of him are perceived from the creation of the world. And when you look at everything that's created, it has to be instantaneous creation as defined in Genesis, the first chapter. Being understood by the things that were made, both this eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Remember what we covered there with Adam and Eve? Yes. Oh, she made me do it. Oh, the devil made me do it. Oh, God, it's your fault. Now, this even fits in with Adam and Eve, right? Because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were they thankful, but they became vain in their own reasonings, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Now, this is a very interesting principle that happens. Whenever you reject God, and you think your thoughts are better than God, you know, whatever it may be. Look at the Ten Commandments. Whenever any one of those are broken, for whatever reason, everyone justifies his or her reason for doing it. That does not stop the penalty of sin from happening any more than it stops the law of gravity from continuing to work. Verse 22, while professing themselves to be the wise ones, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into the likeness of corruptible man and of birds and four-footed creatures and creeping things. So you see the progression. First, you don't want God in your life. Then you make up your mind and do anything you want to do, and most of that ends up being in rebellion to God regardless of how you may feel or how exciting it may be or what temporary advantage you may get from it. 
But sooner or later, it's going to hit. Sooner or later, the sin is going to catch up with you. And here is how it will come. You won't even comprehend it unless you begin to search for God. This is automatic. For this cause, God also abandoned them to uncleanness through the lust of their hearts. And what did we see? Who is the one that's the prince of the power of the air? A pudding, adding to the lust of the hearts of men and women to do the things willed by the flesh and lust and willed by the mind and ideas of men and Satan the devil. To disgrace their own bodies between themselves. Now, you need to go to our series, Obsessed with Sex, because that's exactly where this generation is, completely obsessed with sex and all the various reasons why they think that their perversions, contrary to the Word of God, are good. And they're not. And here's what happens when that occurs. Who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the created thing more than the one who was creator who is blessed into the ages. Amen. Now I want you to finish reading the rest of this chapter here because it describes the world the way it is today. But I want you to notice this. Verse 26 for this cause, God abandoned them, just completely withdraws himself from those people. Who fills in the vacuum? Satan, the devil. What does he bring? He brings sin. And sin is a transgression of the law. And look at the attitudes that are here, all described in Romans, the first chapter, which is like watching our nightly news. So you read it. Then come down here to verse 28. In exact proportion as they did not consent to have God in their knowledge, God abandoned them to a reprobate mind to practice those things that are immoral. And you can read the rest of it. Now, come back here to Romans, the third chapter. Let's see what this does to the world. And I want you to look at what we're going to read here and ask yourself the question, does this describe the world today? Does this describe the way that human beings are? Does this describe everything that human beings do who are living in sin contrary to God? And you need to find out what that sin is because that sin is defined by the breaking of the Ten Commandments. Let's read it. Romans 3, verse 9. What then? Are we of ourselves better, that is, Jews better than Gentiles, or Gentiles better than Jews? Paul says, not at all. For we have already charged both Jews and Gentiles all as being under sin. Exactly as it is written, there is not a righteous one, not even one, now, there may be some people out there who are doing good things. Now, when it talks about righteous ones, it's talking about their thought process, not necessarily their outward actions. Their outward actions may be reasonably good, but what are their thoughts within? And the best way to look at that is what about those con men who come smiling and happy and working with people to take their money away from them with schemes? See, they know what they're doing, and it's up here that God is concerned about. So what is in your mind? Okay. What is in your mind? Well, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you got a lot of sin up there. And if you have the Spirit of God, 
those who do are using it to get it out of their minds. There is not one who understands. There is not one who seeks after God, and you might put their dash, his way of truth and life and redemption, the true biblical way. What you see on the religious channels is not the true biblical way. Yes, they read the Bible, but they don't follow through with what God really requires. Nor do they understand why and the situation concerning repentance through the shed blood of Jesus Christ and then repentance and baptism and what all of that means to come to God. Because people can go around all day and say, I'm sorry. That's not repentance. People can come to God and say, I accept you as my Savior, but that's not baptism. People can come to God and say, well, the law's done away and I'm a good person. That's not what the Bible says. See? And that is a misappropriation of the blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. So that's why you have to get back to the Bible. Notice, it tells all about it, then it comes right into how does God forgive sin? So verse 12, they have all gone out of the way, that's the way of God, the way of truth. Together they have become depraved. There is not even one who is practicing kindness. Now, that means graciousness from the word of God and truth. No, not so much as one. Their throats are like an open grave, and with their tongue they have used deceit. The venom of asp is under their lips, whose mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Sound like the political scene today? Yes, indeed. And even those who are supposed to be righteous, what happens? They're caught in their lies and schemes, right? Didn't, hasn't that happened all the time? Don't public figures get arrested for lying and cheating and stealing to make money? Yes. Well, the FBI has been busy this week cracking down on public corruption. FBI agents officially arrested the mayor of Charlotte, North Carolina yesterday for allegedly taking tens of thousands of dollars worth of bribes. Mayor Patrick Cannon, who's been in office for less than six months, resigned just hours after he was arrested and was accused of taking more than $48,000 worth in bribes from undercover FBI agents posing as businessmen. The 47-year-old mayor allegedly took cash, airline tickets, a hotel room, and the use of a luxury apartment as bribes, not to mention soliciting over a million dollars on top of that. What about all the ministers of the world? What about the very priest of the Catholic Church? How do you handle all of that? Tells us right here. Whose mouths are full of cursing and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood, destruction and misery are in their ways. Look at that. Go, go through any country in the world, and you'll find in greater or lesser degree, this is exactly what is happening. Just to give you a little sidebar here, I just got a report the other day that in Belgium, they now have the law that it's okay for adolescents to choose death in case of sickness or some other thing. Let's see. Did we not fight World War II to stop Hitler from that? What are we offering with this law for difficult situations of suffering and the worst conditions you could imagine for parents and children? Well, it's to be able to die with dignity and to be freed from unbearable and incurable suffering. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Let's go on. The way of peace they have not known. Now, even peace the way it is in the world, 
Very few people know what real peace is. And if they live in a country that's not beset by lots of sin and problems and crime and things like that, they have upset lives, they have difficulties in, in their lives and with their families, husbands, wives, children, neighbors, etc., don't they? Here's why. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Verse 19. Very important to understand. Now then, we know that whatever the law it says, it speaks to those who are under law, and that is every human being. Come back here to Romans 7 and verse 1. Are you ignorant, brethren, for I'm speaking to those who know law, that the law rules over a man for as long a time as he may live, and over a woman as well. Okay. Every human being is under law. Otherwise, there would be no sin. And most of the Protestant and Catholic world do not understand that. Now, to be under grace, we'll get to that a little bit later. But that's what it means when you've repented and been baptized, received the Holy Spirit of God. That's just a little preview of it. But let's come back here to Romans, the third chapter. It speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped. Now, think about that for a minute. No one has a single word of truth back to God. No excuse. He made me do it. She made me do it. The devil made me do it, etc. And all the world, I want you to circle all, all the world may become guilty before God. That's why it says, all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. So how's God going to solve the problem? That's why Jesus died. That's why he shed his blood. That's why he's the sacrifice of sin for the whole world. He's the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. And the sin of the world is the same sin that Adam and Eve did to reject God and go their own way. And this is what it's talking about here. Now, let's understand something very very profound and important. Jesus Christ was the Lord God of the Old Testament before he was the only begotten of the Father in the womb of the Virgin Mary and born into the world and grew up as to be a man, to be the Savior of the world. His life as God in the flesh, his death and his shed blood Nothing that men can do can get rid of the sin that they have done, except there's repentance and baptism. There is no religious acts that men or women can do which can substitute for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and his shed blood. Nothing. Now, you remember that, and when you're watching television, and you're watching about the religion in this country, or the religion in that country, or what the shaman has people to do to get rid of sin, or what any religion may say, you do this and your sins will be forgotten. No, unless there's repentance to God, the Father in heaven above. And unless there's the acceptance of the blood of Jesus Christ, as we will see, for the forgiveness of your sins, and unless that repentance is true and continuous, there's no way to get rid of sin. 
Now, you look at all of the various religions of the world, especially Hinduism and Buddhism and Catholicism, there are things that you do which are supposed to help you get rid of sin. Prayers of blessing for God's goodness, recited either aloud or silently, accompany the priest's preparation of the gifts. He then washes his hands to express his desire for interior purification as he quietly prays words from Psalm 51. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Yes, you need to stop sinning. You need to stop breaking the commandments of God. But if you do 10,000 Hail Marys or Our Father, or if you do 100,000 Buddhist chants, you know why they chant? To try and get the evil out of the minds. That's not the way you get it out. And the Hindus have gods to rats. They even have a temple to rats. It's full of rats. And it's a good thing if you go there and feed the rat because the gods will bless you. That is pure Satanism. Now, remember that relationship to this. Verse 20, therefore, by works of law and all of those things, this is referring specifically to works of law of sacrifices of animals and works of law by Jewish tradition or by pagan tradition, regardless of what it is, by works of law. There shall no flesh be justified before him. Those things will not justify you. Now, we need to stop and talk about what is justification, but we will save that for the next segment. Because justification means you're put into right standing with God, the Father in heaven above not put into a position of acceptance by a religionist, by a clerk, by a priest. Nothing can substitute or be used as a replacement for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who was God manifested in the flesh, and his shed blood. Now, it talks about the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and we'll cover that next time. Again, let me tell you about this booklet, Why Christianity is Failing in America, and that is true. And that's why we have church at home. Now, if that describes you, then write for the book, Lord, what should I do? Because we're living in times where you need to know if you want to get right with God, how to do it, and the way to do it, and what you need to do. There are things you need to do, but they have to be based on the Word of God, not the works of law of men. See, that's the big difference. And then, why did Jesus have to die the day Jesus the Christ died? You write for this book. It will tell you all about the things that we have covered here and will explain to you the very importance of how God did it, when he did it, why he did it, and the circumstances of it. So you need these things. If you're fed up with the world, if you're fed up with what's going on, and if you're going to a Sunday-keeping church and you're tired of the same old, same old, same old, then you write for these things, and this will help you a great deal. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Coulter saying so long, everyone. <laughs>